One of the most important pieces of equipment that you'll be using in lab today is the function generator. Now the function generator can generate sinusoidal waves, it can generate square waves, it can generate triangular waves, it can even generate arbitrarily shaped waves that you define. In lab today we're just going to be using sine waves which is the simplest of all of, all of the, the function generator outputs. I want to show you how to set this up because I think that there are some really important things that, that are not obvious at all. Uh, my first advice is that ev immediately after you turn it on, push the system button, go over to store, recall, and then say set to defaults. Because who knows, the person who used this before you, how they left it set up. You want to clear all of those settings and make sure that they're you know, down to the initial configuration that you expect them to be. That's a good thing to do every single time that you use this piece of equipment. Now, you can see that, that uh, what's shown here in the picture is a sinusoidal wave, and you can also tell from up here where it says sine. So we know that we're going to get the correct shape of the wave. You can also see that the frequency is listed as being 1.0000 kilohertz, and that's just exactly what we want as well. We want it to be 1 kilohertz. The offset is 0, 0.00, that's good. The, the phase is 0, but the amplitude is too high. The amplitude is currently at 100 millivolts. Uh, peak to peak, the PP stands for peak to peak, but we're looking for 10 millivolts peak to peak. So let's, uh, let's push the button that says parameters, and then you can choose. You can adjust the frequency, you can adjust the amplitude, the offset, or the phase. Uh, for us, though, uh, we're going to be adjusting the amplitude. There are two ways you can do this. Uh, once you have uh, uh, set, on, set to adjust the amplitude, you can turn the knob here and take it down to 10, and that's just fine. Or if you prefer, if it's faster, you can just, oops, I hit the wrong button, okay? Then you can just hit one, zero for 10, and then the units are millivolts peak to peak. So either of those is an equivalent way of setting it up. Now, up here at the top, you'll notice that I said that we were happy about the fact that it says sine, but we're not happy about the fact that it says 50 ohms. What that means is that you're actually gonna be outputting twice as much voltage as you expect. For reasons that are not relevant for today, we need to adjust that 50 ohms. So I'm gonna go under, uh, under channel, so under channel, and then you wanna choose the, um, the uh, output load and choose that set to high Z. So set to high impedance. That means that we're gonna actually get the, the, the voltage that's actually being listed there. Now you'll notice that it actually went ahead and, and adjusted that up to 20 millivolts peak to peak. So we need to go in and adjust that again. So let's go to parameters, uh, amplitude, and then I can, take the, I can take that down to 10. And so now we're, we're good. The only thing that remains is that, it, it, see, you can see now that it's, it has adjusted so it says high Z here, which is good. But the only other thing we got to worry about is when this says off. Because whenever that says off, it means that it's not going to output any voltage at all. So that's going to be very frustrating if, if we can't output any voltage. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to channel again, and then you can see where it says output off on. Hit that button, and now it's changed so that up here at the top it says sign on high Z. Before you start the experiment, you should see that it should say sign on high Z. It should be 1 kilohertz and 10 millivolts peak to peak. If it looks just like this, then you're in great shape.